Hi guys, I'm Leone and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you some of my tips and advice that I have discovered over the years from becoming a single mum after being a married woman. So if you have been in a long-term relationship and now you're a single person, then hopefully my advice will help you. Or if you've been in a long-term relationship and you're now a single mum, I'm going to share with you my experiences um, from being a married woman to a single mum and how I have discovered my self-confidence during that journey. So I hope you find this video useful and I'm just going to get straight into it. Okay, so I've wrote down a few pointers here to make sure that I don't forget to make sure that I don't miss anything out. So they're not in any particular order. Um, I'm just going to get straight into it. Discover and realise your value. What do you love about yourself? Now, it is so easy, if somebody asks you, list 10 things that you love about your friend, you can rate them off easily. It's so easy for you to do. But if somebody asks you, what name 10 things that you love about yourself, all of a sudden you find it difficult. At least I did anyway, I felt really uncomfortable doing this. So my advice to you is to do just that. Now you don't have to tell anyone, keep it personal, write it in a notebook or type it into your phone in your notes section on your phone or just do this but in privacy. But you need to list 10 things about yourself because as I said, it's so easy to look at another person and think that's great and she's really lucky because she's got that and she is so amazing because she's got that or he's got that, whoever you're looking at. And you can list all these things that makes them fabulous but then as soon as you think about yourself, all of a sudden you've got nothing to compliment yourself on. So in privacy, you don't have to share it with anyone if you don't want to but just write down 10 things that you love about yourself because more than anything, when you've just become a single person after a long-term relationship, you need to remember what makes you special and you need to know this for when you move on in the future. I think it's really important. Discover a new identity for yourself. Visualise a new future for yourself. So let go of your old identity and create a new one. Now, this was something that took me a while to really get my head around. I identified myself for so long as a married woman. That was my new identity. I was married, I got married when I was 22, so throughout all of my 20s, moving into my early 30s, I was a married woman. That's how I saw myself. Even when we separated, I couldn't let go of the identity of being a married woman. When I met new people, it's like, oh yeah, I was married. I was, I was still holding on, and I was his wife, I was their mum, that was my identity. And in order to move on and in order to take that next step into your future, you have to create a new identity. What would you like to see in your future? Sit and think about what you really want and what would make you happy and what would benefit your children and try and block out other people's opinions. So many of those that are close to you and they mean so well, they mean you well, However, they'll have so many ideas and opinions and what you need to do now and who you need to get with, but you need to just think, what kind of life do you want now? Now that you're no longer his wife or his girlfriend, their partner, what do you want for you? How do you see your future? And just take a lot of time to daydream, visualise, imagine, I love to daydream, I daydream everything, I think there's so much power in visualisation and I would just sit and imagine what my future would look like and it's amazing because there were so many things that I imagined and also even if you don't believe that it's possible, even if it seems so far out of your reach, still imagine, still daydream because I remember five years ago in the situation that I was, I remember thinking I want to be a full-time corporate receptionist again and I want to live in London and... I want to live in a nice apartment and I want it to be all white and I want to do this. Not that it's ever going to happen, but that would be my dream. And already, all of those things that I daydreamed about, I, I already have. And now it just seems like no big deal. Like, this is just my life now. It's, it's normal. But because of how low I was feeling at the time of becoming a newly single mum, that felt so far out of my reach and I was still battling with the whole, oh, I'm a single mum now and the stigma that comes with it. Unfortunately, there is a lot of um, stereotype of what a single mum is and a single mum is as strong as any mum, is as strong as a married mum. Like, 
when you're a mum, you are strong. When you're a stepmom, you are strong. Regardless of how you have become a mum, being a mum is hard work and it's such a beautiful blessing. I just think it's a beautiful thing. So um, it took me a while to feel like that because at first I was like, oh, I used to be a married woman and now all of a sudden I'm just going to be a stereotypical single mum. And it took me a while to get like around that. But anyway, so what I would do is daydream, imagine, visualise and to be honest, I still do that now. I keep daydreaming of what I want my life to look like in five years time and it's a beautiful thing so once you master the power of visualization the power of daydreaming life looks so much um, better I promise you it does so start now if you're a newly single person daydream about what your future and you don't have to sh you don't have to share this with anyone you don't have to tell anybody else just keep it in your own mind in your own thoughts daydream about the future that you would love to have and daydream strong and long and daydream for you, you and your children, leaving out anybody that was once in those daydreams. You're thinking of the future now and just daydream strong. Ah, <laughs> oh, this one is so important. I mean, they're all important, but I particularly like this one. Oh, hi, Milo. Hi, you wanna be on the video? Sorry. This one is, you're putting me off. Like, what are you doing? Are you sitting down? Are you joining in? What's happening? I don't know why I can't concentrate with him just standing there. What's going on? What are you doing? Hey? Eh? Okay, stop getting distracted. Let's go. What was I saying? It is really, really important for you to study money management. Oh, and you can do this in so many ways. You can read books. You can watch endless amounts of videos on YouTube. Um... Or you can chat with successful friends if you have them. Um, but studying money management is so important. Get a grip on your finances. Find out ways to save your money. Find out ways to manage your money. You need to be in a situation where if an emergency comes up, you're okay. You've got this covered. You don't want to be in a position where you always have to rely on someone else. So a lot of people think, yeah, but it's all right for you to say. Or a lot of people think, yeah, but I don't have any money and I've just got, you know, a low income. I can't save. I promise you it is possible to save regardless of your situation. You just have to take responsibility on how you spend money and try and keep hold of money. I'm explaining it rubbish. I'm no, like, financial guru or anything like that but I have read so many books I've done videos on this so I'll link those in the description box below and I've also done videos on youtubers that you can watch um, to help with money management and also my tips I've also done a video actually on how to teach kids about money and there's some really useful tips in that so I'll pop them in the description box below but seriously study money management find a way to manage your finances because once you get a hold on that you will feel so much more stronger and feel so much more in control of your life. Another one, which this has took me a long time to do, but that is to find a passion outside of being a mum. I remember once I had children, I was like, that's it, this is my life now, I am going to be a mum, I am going to be a full-time mum, and this is my life. And it is a beautiful thing, it really is. I love being a mum, I wouldn't change it for the world, I don't ever take it for granted. I appreciate my two beautiful babies so, so much. However, I've always needed that little bit more and that's what's always helped. And for a while I did a hairdressing course. Hairdressing wasn't really for me, but doing that course allowed me to be something outside of being a mum. Then I returned back to work because I was a housewife for a while. Then I returned back to work, but what really helped with me, well, and I wish I'd have started this sooner, was my YouTube channel. This is what I'm doing now. Having a YouTube channel is the best hobby ever. But obviously that doesn't have to be the case for you. It can be learning a new language. I'm also doing that. I'm learning, I'm currently learning Spanish. How to speak, how to read, how to write Spanish. And I'm absolutely loving it. So find a hobby that works for you. That could be working out. It could be... Um, learning a new language, it could be starting a new YouTube channel, it can be starting art or I don't know, there's so many things out there, my mind's just gone blank all of a sudden, but find a hobby that 
you can throw yourself into that works alongside you being a mum. So I'm a single mum. I work full time because I got bills to pay. I'm a single mum, so my children absolutely every day, every night, they are my absolute priority. However, outside of those things, I then have something else that's just mine that I'm passionate about my YouTube channel and studying Spanish. So find a hobby outside of being a mum that will help distract your mind from watching other people and focusing on what they're doing and then comparing their fabulous life to your not so great life. It will help so much. It will stop you from reminiscing on the good times in your relationship and it will stop you from beating yourself up and replaying past um, situations that weren't really benefiting you. Sometimes we have memories and flashbacks and they make us feel horrible and uncomfortable and upset where if you're busy throwing yourself into something that you're so passionate about, a hobby that you're so passionate about, you haven't got time to reminisce on the past that isn't serving you. It just, it helps to distract your mind, it helps you feel good and you learn so much about yourself during that process. So find your passion other than being a mum. Okay, so my next tip, sorry I'm just reading out of my book, I've got all my notes there. Your next tip is to date yourself and again, I've put a new no, but it's pretty similar to one that I said before, but date yourself, find your passion, try new hobbies, have some quality alone time, make mistakes, and also make new friends. Now for me, I did a pretty big one. Mine was quite extreme. I actually moved to towns. I moved to a, the big city. So basically I'm from um, a small town called Oldham, which is the outskirts of Manchester and I moved to London so I moved to an area where I knew nobody I didn't know anybody around here I had a cousin that lived not too far away and my best friend that lived not too far away um, and then my husband's family were also not too far away so there was a benefit in that my children still had family close by and I knew of two other people that were around but in the area itself that I actually moved to I didn't know anyone and it allowed me to that actually really helped because I allowed myself to create a new identity for myself in that when I was still living back home people would still bring up my husband and people would still bring up my relationship and ask questions that made me feel uncomfortable where when I moved to a new area where nobody knew me, I was just Leone. Hi, I'm Leone, nice to meet you. And that was that. Nobody was asking, oh, so what happened? And oh, because they didn't know me as anything else other than Leone, the single mum, which had its ups and its downs because, like I said, being a single mum, you get a lot of stereotype and you'd have some people assuming things about you. Um, however, that was the deal and that helped so much. If, I know that's a little bit extreme, so if you're not able to move to a new area, I would just say attend classes where that you've never done before. Again, in finding your hobby or who you are, make new friends, attend new classes, and surround yourself around new people, people who didn't know you before, so that are not going to keep bringing up the same old, same old. Unfortunately, people that are familiar with you and that know you will always ask questions about the past or what happened years and years ago but they'll talk about it like it only happened last week and you're trying to move on but they're still bringing you back to that place and that place is uncomfortable so get yourself around new people and surround yourself around them around people that are not going to keep raking up the past does that make sense now i absolutely love YouTube. This is why I have a YouTube channel because I've been watching YouTube for so long to the point where I was like I want to have my own channel too. But honestly use YouTube. There are so many beautiful and amazing helpful videos out there and I really hope that this video becomes one of them. Um, <laughs> you can watch videos on self-love, self- Okay. I think I was waffling on for too long, my computer, um, my camera just switched off. But anyway, where was I? You can find so many videos on self-love, self-confidence, self-value and self-care. Self, self, self. Watch those videos. I've even done a video that um, helps. It's my top 10 
what was it called? The top 10 positive and inspiring YouTube channels to watch. And I've also got another video coming up called, if it's not already on my channel that will be coming up soon, is my top five um, positive and what's the name of my video? But I'll put it here. But it's all about channels that I recommend that you watch because these are the videos and the YouTube channels that have helped me and watching these kind of videos, being surrounded by so much positivity, so much encouragement is so, so helpful. So honestly, use YouTube and watch those videos and bombard yourself, immerse yourself into all of that positive uplifting inspiring information because that's the kind of information that you need to be fed I remember I would watch um, reality TV and I'd just watch soaps and a lot of what I was surrounding myself in was all pretty much doom and gloom and everyone complaining and then after watching the program I'd feel a little bit low and down and doom and gloom myself so I stopped watching that kind of stuff and I only watched YouTube inspiring positive videos. Try and watch as much as you can on a regular basis. Um, I watch it daily, I watch it every morning but if you can't quite commit to that just watch it as often as you can. So many helpful videos. I remember my friend actually sent me a video that just it changed. Now, it depends what kind of things that you're into listening to, so I don't know if it's for anyone, but I'm going to find the video and I'll pop it in the description box below because I found it so helpful. I think it was called something along the lines of how to stop caring about what other people think. I think that's correct. I'm going to put that in the description box below because my friend sent this to me and I remember being like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. It was my best friend that sent it to me and it was amazing and I need to watch that again actually because it was really good but at the time it was something that I really needed to hear and sometimes we can take advice off friends or family and it can pinch a little bit and it doesn't sit, it doesn't feel comfortable but when you hear it from a complete stranger you realise just how right they are and the point that they have is really valid so yeah I recommend that one, I don't want to waffle on. Um, so yes, watch YouTube, use YouTube, it's free, it's there, just watch it. Watch my videos while you're at it. I have a whole YouTube channel, just, you know, if you haven't clicked that button yet, just click the subscribe button. Okay, so I've got two that are pretty close together, so I'm just going to say them. In fact, I'll say this one first. Be careful, more aware of who you take advice from and share your feelings with. I think that's really important. Start journaling, have a diary, write down your thoughts and feelings. In that moment, you might be, you might need to vent and you might feel a certain way and you get on the phone, you say everything that you've got to say, you get it off your chest and then you move on. However, when you then meet up with that friend again or have a conversation with that friend again, you may have moved on from what you've said and you got that off your chest and now you've left it there and you've moved on but they're still remembering what you said and they'll bring it up again. Somebody will always try and bring you back to that point and you're moving on and you'll end up regretting telling them in the first place. If you share certain things, they'll ask dumb questions, I'm not going to lie. They might ask you questions like, oh, are you still da 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 or did da 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 happen? Or, Why are you asking me that? Like, that happened a year ago. Why are you still having that conversation? Or, it was a small incident and it irritated you at the time, but you're over it now. But they're taking you back there and they're asking you to re relive that feeling again. And you don't want to bring that up again. Somebody who is close to you is giving you advice, but it's not advice that is for you. It's more advice on how they feel, their experiences, and they're passing that on to you. However, your point of view within a situation could be completely different to what they experience. So even though on the surface it seems like the same situation, really it was two completely different situations. And if your friend is giving you advice, it might not be advice that is effective for you. It's more of that's what they experience, so they're trying to put that on you. Does that make sense? Their advice probably isn't the correct advice for you. And that is why I would say journaling. Again, this is advice that I've got from YouTube as well. I write down my thoughts and my feelings. Sometimes if someone has upset me, I will actually go to my notes, write down the whole response and just keep it there. I won't even necessarily send it. It's just that I'm so wound up, I need to get it off my chest. So by writing it down in a notebook like this or any other notebook um, or a diary, 
or by typing it up, gosh, in my notes, I write down so much in my phone. So by typing it up in there, that can help. Um, so that way you're getting it off your chest, you're not sharing it with anyone. And then once you've done, you can close the book and you can move on. And you never have to be reminded of it again. It's up to you if you want to read it back. But if you don't, it's there. And even after a while, if you're so over it, you can just scrumple it up, throw that in the bin, rip the page out, throw it in the bin. You don't have to go there again. Um, I feel like that's a much better way. And I wish there were many occasions where I talked about things because at that time, that's how I felt. But now moving on, I kind of feel like, oh, I wish I'd never discussed that with such a body. I wish I'd never said this. And it's not because you didn't mean it at the time, because you probably did. But now moments on i'm over it i'm over the situation so get writing down get journaling get yourself a good notebook and keep it somewhere private and safe maybe use your phone use the notes in your phone because then you can just lock your phone and go reflect on what lessons did you learn i feel like life happens for us not to us so rather than play the victim and feel like oh it's not fair this happened to me and that happened to me i want you to look back and think what did i learn from that situation what did i learn about myself and what did i learn about life and that experience that situation and moving forward how can i make sure that that doesn't happen again because sometimes we can pass on the blame but you need to take responsibility for yourself and your own actions. Okay, I'm just reading through my notes here and it's really long, so I'm just going to read it to you. Take responsibility for the decisions that you made in the past. Own your story and control your own responses, your own decisions for your future and forgive yourself for past experiences that you may have wished you could have handled differently. We can't turn back the clock. All we can do is learn from an experience and make sure that you never allow it to happen again. For instance, I, I stopped having hobbies for myself throughout my relationship and my life was all about my husband and my children. Leonie didn't really get a look in, so I never had my own thing. And I think moving on now, when I do eventually get into a new relationship, I will be able to bring my own thing into that relationship. So I'm whole. He's whole and together will be a power couple. And by that, I mean that when I move into a new relationship, I will move into that relationship with my own thing, my own hobbies, my own identity, my own lifestyle. Whereas before, I kind of, everything was all on what my husband was doing and what my children was doing. Take them to out the equation and there was nothing left. So I would say moving forward, not the whole time, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to make out that I was, um, gosh, just helpless, but I realise now that I feel so much more happier within myself, that's it. Don't look on the other person to make you happy, you have to create your own happiness within yourself. So don't play the victim, don't repeat past experiences over and over and over again and stop beating yourself up over what's happened in the past. That happened, you have to own it, you have to take responsibility for it, never mind blaming other people, just realise that it takes two to tango and it takes two people to make a relationship work or not work. You cannot always pass the blame onto another person, so you need to learn from how you was in your relationship and make sure that going forward into a new relationship you don't let the same thing repeat itself. I see so many people who are in one relationship, they move into another relationship, that goes wrong, they move into another relationship without realising that the problem might not necessarily be the other person, it could be you and you have to realise what you bring and realise what mistakes you've made and then really take note of the situation, look at it as a whole and then think how can I do things differently moving on. But for a long time I would think about things and just replay things over and over in my mind and it just got to a point where I was like Leonie that has to stop, like that's done now, it's time to move on and once you do that the pain just drifts away, it really does and it sounds so simple especially when you're emotional and you're going through it, you're like, yeah, right, it's really not that easy. But once you actually do that, you'll find that actually it is. Own your story.
that happened but now moving on what I did was I love, I'm a person of routine, I love to have a good strong routine so I created a new routine for me and the kids and a lot of it was full of positivity and full of rich habits. There's a book called Rich Habits by Tom Corley, I love that book and um, I did a lot of research on habits and I just created my own habits that I knew would keep us positive and focused and I involved the kids. We became a team. Me, Lachey and Dre, we're a team. They're my absolute everything and my cats. Oh, you fast asleep, sorry. You resting? Yeah, my cats as well. Um, and we created a new routine, we stuck to that routine and again it stops you from dwelling or feeling lost, having a good strong routine for the three of you, or you and your children, um, really does help. So create yourself a nice new routine. So I think that's all of my advice, but I'm just going to read a couple of more notes to you um, in case you find this helpful as well. Realising that I don't need anyone but myself to make me happy, apart from my children. My children play a huge part in my happiness because I absolutely love being a mum. Now that I'm a mum, I'm not in a rush to find the one because my priority is myself first. And then building a relation and then building a relationship with somebody else later. I think so many people, once they end once they leave a relationship, they're then in a rush to find a new relationship and their source of happiness is to hurry up and get into a new relationship but what I discovered is actually being single is a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful experience and dating myself is my priority right now. Okay, my camera my camera keeps cutting off, so I think I'm gonna have to be quick. So let me quickly wrap this up. Um, and the second piece of note, I can't remember what I was saying before, I do apologize, my camera just keeps cutting off on me. I think I'm talking for way too long. Um, so the last final piece before I end this video, it says, giving yourself permission to do what you want to do. I want to grow a successful YouTube channel, and it is up to me and me alone to make that happen. Why? because I have discovered that that is what makes me happy. It makes me feel fulfilled and productive. And I can do this without worrying about what anybody else thinks. And because I am single and because I am in control of my own life and I don't have to share my journey with anybody else right now, I am in control. So I get to decide what I want to do and how I want to live my life and I get to embrace how I want to run my household, how I want to manage my money, how I want to raise my children. There are so many things and so many positives to being a single person that I feel like society puts this pressure on you that you must be in a relationship in order to be happy and it really isn't true. I am living I'm living my best life as a single person and I am fully enjoying it. Doesn't mean I want to be single forever, but right now I'm embracing being single and I think more than anything, that's the one piece of advice. If there's anything I'm going to leave you with, it is this. Be confident and happy and secure just being you. Find, listen to all these pieces of advice and find your own sense of happiness before you move into a new relationship. Just I've wanted to do this video for so long but I was worried about how it would come across or if it would be helpful, if the tips that I'd give would be helpful. Um, so please let me know your thoughts. I do hope this video helped. If it didn't, I do apologise. But I just know that from being a married woman and transitioning to the lifestyle of a single mum, it was a journey and it took me a while to find my self-love and my self-confidence. And now, I mean, there's no looking back. I am feeling at my most confident and that's all because of these tips that I've just shared with you now. So I really hope that they help. I really hope that you found this useful. If you did, please just drop me a DM over on Instagram or leave a comment down below. I always read my comments and I'd love to know that this was helpful. And if it isn't, I do apologize. If you clicked on this video and it turns out none of this is helpful, gosh, I do apologize. If you haven't already, tap that subscribe button and I will see you in my future videos. Bye guys.